Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have a sharp game to share with you that was played on Lee Chess June 9th. A 3 plus 1 blitz game. On the white end, anonymous grandmaster Figlud uh, has a blitz peak rating of 29.79. So not your average grandmaster, that is for sure. Uh, playing against Leela Knight Odds. Uh, Leela, in this case, without a queen knight and without the first move. So, two disadvantages here. All right, let's see how this one kicks off. Only a 24 mover. Leela going for a Pierce. And a very early h6. Loves the space. Is already eyeing up after castles. Here we go g5. Okay, this early pawn advance has an influence on white's setup. There's already an idea to give the knight a kick and swipe a pawn. So, some care taken over d4. At the same time, the knight no longer has access to c3. Alright, from here, a small pawn center. Engaging early on, creating exchanges, probably not a good idea that will spark open lines and make exchanges more likely so a small pawn center it is bishop d7 a5 you've gone far enough no punching a hole into c6 with a6 knight a3 here we go with the space g4 and h5 now uh, how white plays it here does not try to challenge this pawn, lets it be. Uh, that is a way. Uh, the follow-up from here, knight c4. Something I questioned, if this pawn is targeted with, let's say, f3. Difficult to say how Leela is going to approach this. Uh, queen h4 may be a move to try and hang on to the pawn for a little bit, or it's possible that you just let it sit and continue to develop, let's say, with queen to e7, and allow this capture, and have this idea to work with these two open lines. From here, bishop h6, an exchange, knight recapture, you're ready to go with queenside castle, and there you go. Play on the h and g file. Difficult to say what the approach would be exactly. How it's played here again, not challenged this invasive pawn, and very instructive to see how Leela manages to work with uh, what black has. This is really the only advantage that black has here, an invasive pawn. Okay, from here it is knight c4, queen e7, and now b3. So just one step. Now with this last move, queen e7, Next up, queenside castles is in the air. You may think, let's just go two and look forward to maybe a pawn break and an open line, an open file. Just a single step. The point, after queenside castles, the bishop wants to have direct sight of d6. This is white's idea, to now hammer away at this now pinned pawn. But black is there already, securing this point, only a bishop move away. We see just that. After e5, the bishop moves. d6 is secure. Follow up from here, knight c2. Bishop h6, something that stuck out to me with this game, this king knight, taking quite a while uh, for it to move. Uh, still on home base. Rerouting the bishop in this case. Follow up queen e2. Bishop f4. And let me throw this position to you as a pop quiz. How would you continue here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, about 30 seconds was spent here. White played knight b4, targeting the bishop. Uh, here's a move I tested out. I was wondering what Leela may come up with if, let's say, bishop e4 was played. Uh, tough to say exactly. Uh, what Leela is coming up with here. First of all, you can't play d5 at least straight away. Still got that pin. 
So forget about trying the fork right now. Uh, what's possible is bishop captures h2, though. And the follow-up queen h4 check. And now you're out of the pin. And so this may now set up d5 in this position to get the at least some of the material back. Uh, there's also a move here, g3. This would go into, after g3, this would go into a queenless position, but uh, some imbalance here with this sequence. Opposite color bishop position. Bishop could be a sturdy defender of uh, f7 in this line. Maybe you operate on these light squares. Tough to say. All right, how it is played here, white does not try to tame the bishop with bishop e4. It's knight b4. Another pop quiz, how would you respond here? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, this must have uh, come as a great shock here to white. Spending about 30 seconds on knight b4, Leela firing away here with bishop f3. <laughs> Did you just spot that one? Okay, that set white back uh, spent about 20 seconds here on the reply. You can't take the bishop. And that's a poison bishop because you take the bishop, you don't have a g-pawn anymore, and no g-pawn means no g3 to tame this coordination on h2. You're going to get mated. There's no defending. Queen captures the h-pawn, eventually going in to h1 for mate. So this bishop... Can't take. Queen c2 is played here. Now queen h4. g3, queen h3. White is there in time. It's not leading straight to mate. Has a saving resource with knight e3. Follow up from here. Pawn captures pawn. Now, computer says best, stockfish that is, 17.1, says best is to go ahead and chop the knight. And then after this recapture, no mate, queen covers that. Now this is how it wants to play it. Chop the knight, follow up with h4. It's calling this close to minus 1.5. Okay, with how Leela plays it, at this stage ends up capturing on e5. Now around this point, white only has about a minute. A minute to work out all of these details. like. Do I take the bishop? Uh, if I do, how is black recapturing exactly? Are you going to go with the pawn? Are you going to maybe advance with e4? There's a lot to really digest with these structural changes. Now, here's what the best line looks like from here. Computer points out pawn captures bishop. What's played in the game uh, a losing move, as it turns out. Bishop captures a6. This is what the top line is by Stockfish. To capture on f4, follow up e4. And if you go here, okay, there's no g pawn anymore. The pawn is supporting the bishop. There's h4, g3 idea. You have an answer to all that with so little time. Also, if you take on e4, after knight f6, now you're going to have to find consecutive only moves are you spotting again with just about a minute on your clock are you going to be spotting bishop captures b7 are you going to be spotting knight captures a6 check and bishop to e7 and know that queen f3 needs to be met with queen d1 to challenge that queen straight away otherwise there might be an accident on this main diagonal not likely okay uh, also, I mean, you have to have an answer to this capture. It says after this, you have an only move in rook f to e1. And after pawn captures knight, the bishop is there just in the nick of time with rook f1 to cover g2. Difficult to assess these structural changes. At the end of the day, white does not take the bishop, tries this sacrifice on a6, which is just not going to work. Let's see how this plays out. Finally, this is move 21. The king knight is developed. Bishop takes b7. King takes. Bishop staying put. Not even allowing this f-pawn to advance. 
and open up the queen's eyes to the second rank. A6 check. King in the corner. There's no getting at the king. It's hiding behind a white pawn. It's on an open diagonal, but this bishop is controlling it. No problems here for black. This is completely winning for black. Follow up from here, d5, and after h4, white resigns. Look at this final position. All of these pieces here on the king's side, ready to smash through and get at that white king. And a queen rook, only a blink away from assisting if you even need that piece. Compare that with white's pieces. No coordination whatsoever towards the black king. Cools a cucumber right here in the corner. Now, if this played out, <laughs> there's a beautiful continuation here. I'll point out a couple lines if white's playing this one out. Uh, the only way to prevent mate right away is to take the bishop. This would allow g3 straight away. There's more than one winning approach. I'll highlight this one. What do you do about the mate on h2? You're going to have to chop here with the f-pawn. You take with the h-pawn. Mate on h1. You'd have to take with the f-pawn. Now, because that king knight is finally developed, there would be bishop e4 to address the threat. And you get to play that with tempo. And now from here, let's say after queen f2, you're crashing through on g3. And white is not uh, able to recapture the queen. It says you would have to. But uh, you're going to end up in a pin. This here is completely collapsing for white. One final try if this game continued here after h4. Let's say the rook made a move here. Can you spot the follow-up here by black? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, we would see a beautiful queen sacrifice. With queen captures h2 check. King moves, mate in the corner. Here's the thing. Mate in the corner cannot be prevented. After king captures queen, we would have pawn captures, pawn double check. King g1 only move. And the rook goes to h1 for mate. Leela is... A wizard. No knight, no first move, doesn't matter, still crushes here. What are your thoughts with this one? Feel free as usual to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.